Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your mighty name.
He's a way maker. Amen. Yeah. Miracle worker. Amen. Yeah. Light in the darkness. Every yeah. time. Thank God. Yeah. Praise God. And there's, and with Him there is nothing impossible That's right. for those that believe. Praise Amen. God. Thank God. Lord bless you for being here this morning. We are a blessed and privileged people to be in the house of God today. Praise God. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Where God says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Praise God. Let's praise Him one more time. God, we love You. God, we praise You for Your Spirit that's in this place today. God, we ask, Lord, You just come down and anoint God Your messenger today. And on hearts and ears to receive Your Word. And we'll praise You for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. And You may be seated. Let me read that, that again. The Bible said, For the Word of God is quick. And that word quick means alive. So we can read it like this, for the Word of God is alive. It's alive and powerful. The Word of God is alive and powerful. For just a little while this morning, I want to preach to you the living Word. The living Word. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. How, how many know <laughs> this Word of God will expose you? Amen. Right. When, you, when you begin to read and study the Word of God, the Word of God will, will expose you. Why? Because it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Right. This Word of God will convict you. Yeah. Right. But this Word of God will also save you. Amen. The Word of God is alive. Amen. It's quick. It's powerful. Praise God. It's sharp. We begin to look at the Word. What makes it the living Word? What makes it the living Word? The Bible says in, in, in John, the first chapter, said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Then you drop down to the 14th verse. And it says that the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Amen. So we know that the Word that was made flesh was Jesus. Was Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In, G in John 6 and 63, Jesus said, It's the Spirit that quick, quickeneth. 6 and 63, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, or makes alive. Or makes alive. The flesh profited nothing. He said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are alive. All right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Praise God. Somebody, somebody may ask the question, why is it important to know the Word? Why is it important to study the Word? Listen, this is your life. Right. You this is your life. And you begin to, to fill your heart not only with the Word of God, but with the Spirit right. of God. It begins to give you life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. He said the flesh don't profit anything. It profits nothing. Too many. We spend too much of our time trying to fulfill the lusts of the flesh when we ought to be filling our hearts with the Word of God. Right. Right. Because the flesh profits nothing. Yeah. Come on. He said, "The words that I speak unto you, he said, they are spirit and they are life." He said, "I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly." Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? You 
If you're walking around here like you're dead, you don't have enough of the Word of God in you. Uh, I said, if you're walking around here like you're dead, you don't have enough of the Word of God in you. Because but he said, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. They're life. Can I tell you, there's nothing dead about Jesus. Yeah. Huh? There's nothing dead about Jesus. Right. Even though Satan thought he had him right. after Calvary, after he was put in that tomb, but he didn't stay there. No. Why? You can't kill the Word of God. Right. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. You can't kill the Word of God. The Word of God is going to triumph every time. He said in John 15 and 7, He said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. That word abide means to live with, or live in. His words live in you. <laughs> you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. See, see, Bible said in one place, see somebody said, well, I asked and I didn't receive nothing yet. You, 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 you. Bible said you, you ask and you have not because you ask amiss. Huh? If, if, if the Word of God abides in me or if it lives in me, the things I ask for are going to be spiritual things. That's right. Right. Oh, right. Hmm? Why? Why? Because the Word of God says, if I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these other times I spent so much asking God for, He said, all these things shall be added unto you. If I seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, if I seek life first. If I seek life for Him. He said it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you or live in me, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. But look what Revelations, and I like this one, Revelations 19 and 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name, his name yeah. is called the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. I, I don't care. You, you can go all the way through the Old Testament you can go all the way through the New Testament, all the way through Revelation, and there's no way you can separate Jesus from the Word. Amen. Right. That's right. Because right? in the beginning was the Word. Right. Yeah. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. We have held His glory. Praise God. <coughs> Praise God. And He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. That was the blood of Jesus. Right? His name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. The living Word. The living Word. Why? Because the grave couldn't hold Him. Yeah. He's the living Word. But look at Colossians 3.16. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the Word of God, the Word of Christ, dwell in you richly. Richly. Thomas David said, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hiding the Word in our heart. Let it dwell in our heart. Let it live in our heart. Praise God. Because, listen church, we face situations every day that we need the Word of God to get us through. Right. Right. Praise God. The living Word. The living Word. So, so how is it the living Word? Because of Jesus Christ, it becomes alive. Because the Word of God becomes alive in our heart. Listen, when we began to apply the Word of God to our lives, it comes alive. I don't know. Listen. 
Let me say it again. When, when, when we begin to, it, it don't come alive unto me until I apply it to my life. But when I take the Word of God and I begin to apply it to my life, it becomes alive in me. The things, the things of God that are around me become alive to me. I'm more aware of everything that goes on around me. When I begin to apply it to, to my life. See, some people don't want to apply the Word of God to their life because it convicts their life. It condemns their lifestyle. Hmm? She comes alive. <coughs> Word of God comes. It comes alive when we read in the Word of God the things that Jesus said and we see those things come to pass. Listen, when God speaks it, it's going to happen. And God has spoke throughout of His Word of things that are going to happen. We've seen the Word of God come alive. We see, right. We've seen Him speak it, and then we've seen that come to pass that He spoke. Right. We, we've seen it come alive. Praise God. When, when someone's filled with the Spirit of God, when someone's filled with the Holy Ghost, the Word of God comes alive. Yes, it does. When somebody is healed, the Word of God comes alive. Right. Throughout the Word of God, you could you could read. Uh, what, what's going to what's going to make? He said, he said, if I go away, I'm going to come again. One of these days, that's going to come alive. It's going to be a reality. It's going to happen. Also, when we begin to apply the Word of God, you know that's the reason it never has become alive to to a lot of people. They never applied it to themselves. They never applied it to their lives to let the Word of God come alive in them. He said, let, let, let that word dwell in you richly. Look. At the resurrection of Jesus when he came out of that grave. And that stone was rolled the wrong way and he wasn't there anymore. The word of God came alive. Why? Because Jesus had already spoken it. He said, destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up. It had already been spoken. There was no way. Since the Word of God had already been spoken, it was going to come alive. There was no way He would stay in that grave. Amen. Because it had already been spoken. Jesus was, was taken away into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. He combated Satan with the Word of God. He said, it's written. Yes, it is. It's written. Why? Because it, the Word was alive. It's written. It's written. It's written on the pages of this book. But it also, he said, he said it's not going to be written on, on tables of stone anymore, but in the fleshly contents of your heart, I'm going to write the Word of God. Yeah. It comes alive. On the day of Pentecost in the upper room, the Word of God came alive. Because it, is, it had already been spoken. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It had already been spoken. It had already been prophesied about. Jesus had already told them, Go and tear ye into Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. It was already spoken and it came alive. The word of God that was spoken. Because it's a living word. It's a continuous word. And it lives today just as it did 2,000 years ago. He said, I'll, he, said, he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. He came alive in the upper room. He came alive in the upper room. Peter and John, when they walked up to that lame man sitting by that gate, begging on, the Word of God came alive that day in the lives of Peter and John. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Yes. <laughs> you talking about a happy beggar. He came alive that day. He came alive that day. The Word of God came alive. I like this at the household of Cornelius in Acts 
10 and 44. The Bible said, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. Why? Because it was, it was those words that Peter was speaking was the words of God. It was the word of God. As he spake those words, they began to come to come to life, and the believers that sat in the household of Cornelius that day. So a lot of times the word of God is not alive to us. You know, a lot, a lot of people think the word of God is boring. Then you don't know the God that I know. Hmm? Amen. Because right. God that I know is alive and His Word is alive. Amen. See, Hebrews 11 and 3 says this. Through faith, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. See, he spoke it and it happened. He spoke it and it happened. If, if you go back to, to John 1 and 3, where I began reading there, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word, uh, you know, the word was made flesh. But if you drop them down, the second verse, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, All things were made by Him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then Hebrews 11 and 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. We understand that. Could I tell you? Even, even though this word is thousands of years old, everything that is, was spoken in this word is still alive today. Amen. Right? It's still alive. It's still the living Word. It becomes the living Word when we apply it to our lives. See, 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says this, all Scripture, it didn't, it didn't just say the New Testament, right. Brother Richard, right. it didn't say just the Old Testament, it said all Scripture. Right. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes. What is the Scripture? It's the Word of God. Amen. It's the Word of God. Second Peter 1 and 21 says this, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Inspired. We call it the inspired Word of God. We call it the living Word of God. But what, what, brings, what brings this Word alive? As I read this Word, as I study this Word, as I preach this Word, what brings it alive? What brings it alive in, in your life? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. This Word that's written on the pages of the Bible it's our faith that brings it alive. Hmm? And the Word of God, the Word of God is not alive in your life. You need more faith. Right. Amen. It, 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 it's our faith that brings the Word of God alive. It's our faith that makes it the living Word. Right. Got to have faith. Got to believe. See, this wasn't, as, as Paul, I believe it was, told King Agrippa, or maybe Festus, one, one of those, he told him, he said, this wasn't done in a corner. Right, right. This wasn't done in a corner. This wasn't hid from you. Right. It's the living word. It's the living word. And we need to have faith enough to apply the word of God to our lives. Praise God. You can go, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read Psalms 119. Somebody said, why? You never read Psalms 119. <laughs> but if you, if you take time to read Psalms 119, you'll, you'll find it's full of scriptures about the Word of God. 
David, David was high on the Word of God. He said David was high on the Word of God. The Word of God is alive. It's quick. It's powerful. I, I, the spoken Word, I don't think we realize how much power there is in the Word of God. But it's, it's our faith. It's our faith. Our reaction to the Word of God that brings it alive in our lives. You want to find life? You find it in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, Amen. Find salvation in the Word of God. You find healing in the Word of God. You find encouragement in the Word of God. Yes, sir. You find power in the Word of God. Why? Because it's the living Word. Amen. Listen, it, it didn't die. All down through the years, the Word of God hadn't died. Right. It's alive and well. It's alive in the well. We not only call Him the Word of God, but we call Him Jesus. Amen. Because He came to seek and save that which was lost. Take the Word of God and apply it to your life. Somebody said, well, I've, I've tried this and I've tried that and it had not worked. I've tried this and I've tried that. My life is all messed up. I've tried this and I've tried that. Everything seems to go wrong. Try it God's way. Amen. Yes. Try it God's way. Try it by the Word of God and apply it to your lives and see what a difference and what a change can be made in your life today. The old songs we used to sing years ago, you never really lived until you know the Lord. You never really lived. I reminded a lot of times you watch Sister Brisbane used to sit over here. She's passed on now. But one of her testimonies would be, it's a good life living for the Lord, she said. It's a good life. A church, when it becomes our lifestyle to serve God, it becomes a good life. Uh, it becomes a good life. Let's all stand up. Let the Word of God come alive in your life today. The Bible says the Word of God is alive according to Hebrew. The Word of God is alive. And God is here today to touch your life in a special way. Praise God. Let's come and give Him praise today as they sing.